Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Corvettes and Crosby. All right guys, this is it, we're here. We are at Carlisle, we are at the Corvette booth, and we're gonna go over quite a bit of stuff. I'm gonna break these episodes up into certain parts, but this is gonna be the meat and potatoes. So get your notebooks out, get your thinking caps on, because we're gonna go to class. We're gonna learn as much as we can about the new Z or Z, and we're also gonna be interviewing some of the Corvette greats. We've got Josh Holder, We've got Dan from the transmission team that has an important announcement for us. And then I'm gonna to try to reach out to Harlan and Taj, who's also gonna be here today. I talked to Harlan off camera yesterday. We were looking for the Gemini on that Z06, and it was an amazing experience. So stay tuned. I've got an all Corvette episode coming your way. <music> Peace Bridge into Buffalo. Here we come. First breakfast stop, I think, is going to be in Elkaville, a nice little ski village in northern New York. All right, order here we come. Well, as you guys can see, I'm at my gas station in Buffalo. They, they got the last name spelled wrong, but we'll, we'll let it slide. So we got a little bit of a stint to Ellicottville. First taste at American Fuel here at $4.00 and 69 cents let's call it 470 american for a gallon and it's 93 here which is obviously very nice because that's what's required for these so we're going to fuel up here and then ellicottville here we come here we go pennsylvania guys who made it we're here all right guys it is day one just getting my bearings here but i want to make sure that i record my reaction live to seeing the z06 for the first time all right guys this is it i'm going in it's gonna be here somewhere there it is i see it there is a z06 it's a 70th Z062. Wow, we. Holy moly. Well, right off the bat, guys, this is uh, this is my first time seeing the Z06. I wanted to make sure I got this on camera because uh, it's a special thing, you know. It's the Z06. This is a new generation. So first impressions, as I can definitely tell that it is a little bit wider than the C7. So for reference, sorry guys. For reference, you can see it in the fenders especially. Holy moly. Wow, this is something else. These intakes are a little bit further out as well. And I do also like the uh, exposed carbon fiber. So this is the aero package that I have coming on mine. So this is the TOJ option that we have coming on it. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm giving you a lot away. I guess I should probably tell you guys what I'm getting. We are going to be getting a Z07, so it's okay, don't worry. So we did get a Z07, it's a, it's a rare allotment. The code for that is TOJ. So with that, we decided to do all the different things that came with a Z07 for Aero. And one important thing to note is that if you are going to get the exposed carbon fiber Aero, you need to make sure that you have the exposed carbon fiber wheels. So this is actually... Uh, against the rules for ordering it. But the only reason why I think that this is allowed is because this is a 70th anniversary. And, um, wow guys, this is it. We're here, we're looking at them. Now there's another one over here in Elkhart Lake Blue. Hopefully later on today when it's a little bit less busy, I can get a little bit of a look. But we've got a 70th over there. It looks like that is a Z06 in the 70th, and then this is also 
an Elkhart Z07 with the uh, black carbon flash edition packages on it. So very cool, guys. All right, let me breathe this in a bit, and then I will uh, give you guys a full breakdown. This is awesome. I'm here. It's it's happening. Oh boy, a Z06 doing a rev. Look at this, guys. Check this out. All right, well, that was my first impression, and uh, I love it. It's it's this it's a special time. It's the it's the next Z. You know, enough said about that. So they're doing a lot of info sessions here uh, throughout the day, and um, it's one of my favorite things to be able to do because there's a lot of things that can get lost in translation, and when you're hearing it straight from the horse's mouth, not to say that any of them are horses, but you get what I mean with that. You get a lot more. Um, insight on on what it is that you know general motors and team corvette want you to do dave simpson for example was a really important uh class session yesterday and i'm gonna do um the segment on that in a separate episode just because this whole presentation is uh long but it was very worthy so this is going to be more of a summary of all the different uh things that i've learned over the course of the weekend here at carlisle and um We'll do little separate segments as we go on it. You know, for example, I'm going to be doing one specifically on the natural dip and design stuff. Um, you know, to see this uh, silver flare with the red interior, I think is a really amazing combination that needs to be featured. And then things like the exposed carbon fiber. You know what I say always on the channel? If you're going to do exposed carbon fiber, you got to go all the way and do it. And this is an example of that where we have the wheels done. We have the TOK, which is this Z07 aero package done. All the carbon fiber that you can do is on this specific model. And it's a really great example when you do it with Red Mist Metallic. So, um, yeah, the, the Z06. This is the track performance variant version that the everyday Joe or the weekend warrior can do. You know, there is obviously the ZR1. We've had it in the previous generation. We don't know if we're going to have it again in the next generation. But um, for the most part, this is going to be the mass-produced track variant version of the Corvette. And with that, there is a lot of things that they've done to the powertrain in particular and the suspension and then aero. There are different levels of aero that you can get on these specific models. And this is the lower variant version which is the non-aero package. You can see in the back here, it has a different spoiler. It's not a two post system. It's a similar system to what we had on the regular Stingrays, which this would be uh, a Z51 in my favorite color right now, which is hypersonic gray. I say right now because there could always be a difference coming about. And I think it's a really great thing that we are always changing the color. So Silver Flare does a really good job at accenting the non-track variant um, aero package you'll also notice that the exhaust tips are in two different finishes so this is the chrome tips and then over here we have the black tips and it doesn't coincide with the emblems so in the past i would have assumed that if you did the um chrome emblems which none of these actually have on them that maybe it would come with the chrome exhaust but that doesn't seem to be the case it, i think it's a separate option just like you can do on the uh, Stingray models where the exhaust tips are always chrome and then you have to choose to get them black. So I'm actually learning as we go with this right now, which is kind of fun. The wheels in person are quite a bit different than what I was assuming they would be. This is a forged set of wheels. It is a, um, a machine face on this one. It has the Spectre Gray on the inside of it and it is also in a 21 inch format. So. You know, GM obviously is not taking, you know, any cues from me, but they, they've done what we've been doing with the Stingrays and getting it a better fitment with the offset. And you can tell that they've been doing that just basically, you're just by looking at how deep 
this dish is on this wheel. And for reference, guys, this is the Stingray Z51. These are the newer set of wheels that they came out with. These are the Forge sets. This is a 19 in the front, and then we have a 20 in the rear. And as you guys can see, the stance of the Corvette is a little bit off when you're on the regular Stingrays. You can see that it's kind of in a bit. It's not as flush. That's mainly to do with the fact that this is a 20 inch wheel and there's no offset. But when I look at this one with the 21, you'll notice that they've done a really great job at pushing that wheel out and also making it larger to fit the body a little bit better. This is Amplify Orange. It's a Z06 color. I think pastels in particular are gonna do really well with this color or with this kind of trim. I think that the Z06 obviously is a more vibrant uh, trim level and, and you're gonna have a lot more vibrant attitude when you're doing the design on it. It's a nice accent to also be able to do the orange calipers when you have the Amplify Orange. And this is an option that you can choose when you do the ceramic brake option. So you can't get these orange calipers just if you want them on a regular degular Stingray over there. You gotta get the ceramic brake option to be able to then choose to do this orange. And I believe it's called Edge Orange, I'm not sure. Actually, you know what, Actually, it's just saying it out loud, it doesn't sound like that. I think it's just called Orange. So this is our first look at the orange calipers that you can choose to get. There are other calipers that are chosen for you and that is when you're doing the 70th anniversary. These are the edge red calipers that are part of the anniversary package. There's not a lot of options that you can choose on an anniversary edition. You can choose the exhaust, you can choose what type of spoiler that you have, and you can choose between either carbon flash metallic, which is this color, or diamond white or pearl white, depending on if you're knowing the color from being on the Cadillacs first, or if you're looking at them from the accents that we've always had. So this color, Carbon Flash Metallic, should be a very well-known name for you guys because every accent on the Corvette from the C7 and C8 generations was done in Carbon Flash Metallic. So these nacelles and this top here are all painted in Carbon Flash Metallic. And also, if you have a 2012 Corvette in a Grand Sport, they had the Centennial Edition, which was the Louis. The Louis was also done in Carbon Flash Metallic. So this is not a new color to us. This is an old friend that we're bringing back and it's a really great accent that we've turned into the entire vehicle. This Z06 or Z06, depending on which country you're from, over here is done in carbon flash metallic. And it's got a little bit more of an open area for you to be able to see the colors and the lines of it. I have said this from the beginning, when it comes to black, I'm very conflicted in getting a car like this in black. And why I say that is because there are so many functional design cues that are on these vehicles that when you have it in black, it's very, very difficult to be able to show those off. There's no travel in the paint whatsoever. When I look at, you know, Silver Flare or Elkhart Lake Blue or Red Mist Metallic, you can see at different areas in the car where the, the, the metallic paint or the lines are accentuated and you can see that, that's called travel. So when I stand here and I look at this and I look at the hips or this area here, you can see the different colors of Elkhart Lake Blue and that's the travel that I really like because it shows off and accentuates the vehicle. But when I go over to the Carbon Flash Metallic version over here, you lose that. You're paying good money for a Z or even a Stingray and I feel like you're not selling yourself short but you could do a better job at accenting all that engineering and technology if you're wanting to do that. Now, I'm not telling you what to do in ordering the color. I think that you should always be the one that does that. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But when it comes to a color, if you're gonna get a big dog like this and you're gonna spend upwards of $150,000 American, I think that it would be way better done in a lighter color. Now, fortunately for you, if you are gonna get a 70th anniversary, you don't have to get it in carbon flash metallic. You can get it in our good old fashioned G1W. G1W has been around for a long time on the Cadillac lineup and also on the High Country Chevrolet and Denali lineup as a pearl white paint. This is a tri-coat, not a tint coat, a tri-coat because it has a lot of mica. And mica is the stuff that makes things go pearlescent. This guy is really going hard on that <laughs> vacuum cleaner over there. Hopefully he'll be done sooner than later. Um, He's fighting an uphill battle with all these people being here, but uh, good, good luck to him. Um, now, the pearl white paint really does a great job at showing the travel off on the, the Corvette. 
a lot more than that. Just from even this distance here, it's very difficult to be able to see all those accents. But on this one here, you can see the hips on her a lot easier. And this is not even the Z51, or sorry, the, the Z06. So, you know, the fenders and everything on this are, are not nearly as, as prominent as they are on the Z06. I wish that I had that one over here in the sunlight to show you guys all the differences on the Z06. We're doing a really great job at doing this in a one take. I'm gonna keep going and see how long we can go with this. But this is the, the second color that you can do in a 70th. I really enjoy the interior. There is a lot of attention to detail in this interior, such as things like having knee pads. I doubt that this is gonna be unlocked, but do you have the keys to this one? Not right now. Not, not right now, okay. So there are a lot of little attentions to detail. It's not just like the bolsters have been accented in ceramic, which is actually a new color for the interior that we have. Um, there's knee pads that are done in there. The door sills are also done up in a different way. Um, but yeah, it, it's a very cool option. So differences of the Z51 over the Z06. Well, in the front end, this is gonna be a big area where you're gonna notice differences. I've been talking to a lot of people from Team Corvette and I'm saying, what are the things that when you see one of these driving down the road that you're gonna be able to tell right away that this is a Z over a regular Stinger? And a lot of them are mentioning the front end and this in particular, they're calling this the nose or the chin of the front end of the vehicle. And that's because this is a wider platform. So you're seeing the fenders on the vehicle being a lot wider and that in this area in particular is where you're gonna see it start off. And then also you're seeing how aggressive the intake system is on the Z06. Now the fender flares are out about an inch and a half on each side, so it is obviously a wider vehicle. And then you're also seeing a wishbone intake system here. That's what we've been calling it, which is right here. So on your regular one, which is over there on that 70th anniversary Z51, you'll notice that it has kind of a boomerang style, whereas this one is a wishbone. So if you're seeing it from a side profile, that's gonna be your first cue that this is a Z06. You'll also notice that we have a new emblem badge area right down here in the lower intakes area. That is also a difference from the regular Stingray. Not to say that these are regular, they're still great cars, but that's a big difference. And then we have a two post system. This is the first time that we've had a two post system on the Corvette C8 generation. And I love it. I think it's a lot cleaner. I think that in terms of when you're trying to get stuff in and out of the deck of the vehicle, it's gonna be a lot more ergonomic. If you notice with the Z51, that was one of my favorite benefits is you had that 400 pounds of downforce at top speed, but they also still had a very low profile in the center area for when I'm transitioning stuff in and out. That's ergonomics and that's what they're doing. They're thinking about what they're talking about and they're not just trying to make it be cool. To have a vehicle that has a crazy amount of downforce is one thing, but to be able to use that vehicle, get your luggage out, not have it hit on the top of the wing while you're getting it out, that's something great. I'm thinking of the Viper in particular, where it's just basically a straight wash spoiler on the back that you can eat your breakfast on. I wouldn't wanna try to eat my breakfast on this because it's actually functional and ergonomic at the same time for when I'm getting my luggage in and out of the car. This is a coupe. You can tell it's a coupe right away because of the beautiful view at the hand-built engine in here. This engine, I don't know as much as I would love to know about it. There is a cutaway over there and I'm hoping to learn more about that engine as I go, but I have heard it fire up for the first time yesterday and um my ears hurt that's something that i haven't said in a long time from a factory spec vehicle to think that this thing is way louder than the previous um c7 z um or even just the c8 stingray is saying something you know i i thought for a long time that there were a lot of regulations that the governments were imposing you know perfect example of one where you think that the government is starting to get involved with how these vehicles are designed is the braking system. We no longer have slotted rotors on the C8 generation. And that was something due to California and the regulations that they had. So that was an example of where they're stifling, you know, some design. But then, you know, on this specific model, when they fired it up, uh, there, was, there was a huge difference in the sound that I have not heard in a long time. And just as a side note, this is kind of a little bit of insider information. This Z06 right here has been specifically positioned for one reason and one reason in particular. Over there are all my friends that I met last year when we were doing our exhaust. And this is that symphony of listening to all the different sounds. We've got a Borla going off right now. We have courses in the middle. We have AWE, which is what I did on my old C8, or not old C8, I guess it's still my current C8. 
and they're going off all day long. And um, well, what better way of showing them what we're made of than positioning this Z06 right at their area and revving it up every single time that they do it. And they've been doing it. It's been absolutely hilarious. I don't really know what you could say to that, guys. If you're Borla and you're Corsa and you're hearing this exhaust, which GM is definitely sending a message and they even told me that they're sending a message to do it, I think match point right now. What, what could you really do? I've already talked to the AWE guys and they're really a little lost for words in terms of what um, they're gonna do in terms of an exhaust system on this thing. They obviously haven't got one yet. They said that their engineering team is looking into it. In my words, I think that this just means that they, they don't have one and they haven't even started to look at it yet. So not to rip on the aftermarket exhaust team, but Team Corvette has done a match point, a Euchre, an Ace Royal Flush by having this Z06 here positioned right at them to let them know that we got their number and that this exhaust from the factory with full warranty, with no modifications done in any way, is far and above the best sounding Corvette I've ever heard in my entire career. So I think that's pretty amazing to think that, you know, you think that the government regulations are gonna limit the amount of decibels that you can have on a Corvette, and then they come out with this thing that is just wild. So I was very fortunate to do an exclusive little interview, a couple questions, it's not even really an interview when it's this many people around, with Josh Holder. We did talk about the exhaust, and um, it was really great. It was, uh, it was really insightful. He has a master's PhD in internal combustion engines so he is without a doubt one of the best people to be able to talk to uh, about Corvettes and especially this type of Corvette. Another thing that I was talking to him about off camera was the enthusiasm with General Motors in particular with this being a gas burning engine and how many vehicles that we have coming out in the electric world coming up and he basically said you know GM, Mary Barr and them, they know that we're the shining stars of the company right now and that we don't need to be reassured that we're doing a good job. She says, I know that you guys are the halo vehicles of our brand and you just keep doing what you're doing, which was really reassuring to know that even though our direction as a company is going towards EVs, that they recognize and realize that this is still the hottest kid on the block and this is what really pays the bills. And when you see these vehicles firing up and you see all these different amazing trim levels here, you really get an idea of that. So I'm going to break this off now into a couple of the interviews and then I'm also going to do a couple more segments after I've had some time to learn more about these Corvettes. I hope you guys enjoyed this long-winded one take on the Corvette booth at Carlisle. Stay tuned guys, I got some more great content coming your way. Alright, I'm with yours truly, Josh Holder. This is, I would consider you be the godfather of engineering with this car and uh, I think he is a very very important person and I got one shot one question with him question. and I went with the exhaust so my question to Josh was what's going on with this exhaust situation where these ones look like they're from a broil king barbecue and these ones don't so the center exhaust system the center two pipes on the z06 are what we call the valve portion of the exhaust so when you open up the valve it's on this pipe that opening is going to take all the back pressure out of the buffer system. It obviously gives you the cool sound, but it reduces back pressure. Okay. When that valve is closed, we force in the exhaust, usually at, at low flow rates like idle and others, through this outboard pipe. Okay. Those holes are to draw in more air to slow the velocity of the exhaust as it comes out of the pipe. So you don't get as much flow noise as we call it, that kind of hissing noise that you can hear from a muffler that's got a small diameter pipe with a large internal combustion engine connected to the other side. So we're trying to reduce the amount of flow noise when these valves are closed. So I just took delivery yesterday of an Escalade V yeah. and yeah. it has no resonators in it. And when I'm letting off from 3000 down in the RPMs, there is just like a hornet's nest. It sounds like I'm in an AMC movie theater and popcorn is on the go. And when Mike was revving the Z over there, or yep. Zed, sorry, my Canuck accent yep. is coming through. I didn't notice that nearly as much. Would you say that that has to be attributed to that system or is that something different? That has more to do with fueling at the time of uh, uh, combustion events when we're um, getting the pops and burbles out of the muffler, certainly the tuning inside can accentuate it. 
Uh, but what I've described for flow out the center uh, versus uh, restricted flow or quiet flow out the side doesn't really have much of an impact on the pop and bourbon music. That's okay. more uh, calibration based and internal muffle, muffler baffling. So I'm going to push my luck here, but w what are you most proud of from an engineering perspective from the regular Stingray Z51 to the ZZ? The driving experience. Okay. How different a Z06 is to drive. So Taj always talks about broadband. Are you referencing that in particular? Or? Yeah, he, he uses bandwidth. Bra bandwidth, sorry. Term. Yeah. He's basically describing a car from a pretty docile, you know, grand touring machine to an all-out track monster. Um, what I'm referring to more of is the difference between the Z06 and the Stingray, which is certainly a capable car, is more different than any Z06 to standard Corvette that we've ever had. So we can talk okay. all day long about the bespoke engine and the number of parts that are different and all of that, but it all adds up to a driving experience. And the driving experience in the Z06 is so much different for a car in the same architecture than the Stingray that you realize immediately how special the car is. How different the car is, the way the engine sounds, the way it feels, the visceral. We use that word a lot. Yeah. But it's true. You feel very connected to the car. It's a little bit raucous, a little bit bad boy, a little bit raw. But it's a constant reminder of how special it is. I, I couldn't agree more. And that's one of the things that, um, as a car guy, I always try to have to be able to explain. And it's kind of sometimes very difficult to be able to explain that because you can't put a face to that that feeling. Exactly. You just. You have to experience it. So I know there's a lot of people pining to be able to get in the car, and soon you'll be able to read about others' experience getting in the car that are third parties, you know, not just, just us telling people how great it is. But I expect that to shine through. People are going to be blown away after just a short drive. You don't have to be in the car very long. You're like, wow, this is really, really something special and really different and very unique, yet still a Corvette uh, from the Stinger. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate that. All right, guys. All right, guys. I don't know what better way to send this off than to have everybody here at Carlisle rev their engines all at the same time at high noon. How cool is that? Thousands, tens of thousands of horsepower revving up right now in front of everybody here. How cool is this, guys? This is something else. I'm getting goosebumps seeing this. My phone died as I was filming that little send off there. Uh, I've gone through a full battery and then also the battery pack that I had on the back of my phone to charge it up. I've got to get back on the road so that I can get home at a reasonable time to Mrs. Cars and Crosby and my beautiful daughter. But everyone out there, I, this was a real hoot. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy all the episodes that I've filmed throughout my stay here at Carlisle. Stay tuned for more awesome content. There's gonna be lots of more fun stuff to come. We've got our event going on on the 24th of September, which is the next time that you'll have a public event that I'll be attending. And uh, thank you very much for everyone that I met and saw here. This is a real humbling experience. And I'm just so happy uh, to have been a part of it for the second time in a row. Signing off. <laughs>